Hey guys, I am coming to you from a secret bunker where they've locked up this car because it is the still super secret BMW 1 Series. Just kidding, still the 1 Series here, still the 1 Series here, but ta-da, it is the all new 2 Series Grand Coupe, super important car for BMW, especially in our part of the world. So this is the first time it's seen the light of day. So stick around, let's check it out together. You might recognize this from the new one series of course it has the same nose you probably guessed it this is the 235 because it has the horizontal slats in this double kidney grill i really love this iconic glow idea then your friends and neighbors can see that you're coming home even though you can't from the driver's seat and you can see there's a lot of black here and you know black implies that a car needs a lot of air right and that implies that it's powerful you can have all this even if you don't buy the m235 because it is available in the m sport pro trim and even the m sport if i'm not wrong and if i am don't sue me they are new uh, headlights as well they're much slimmer than before and you do have the kind of four eyed look that bmw is famous for so right here is stylized as these two vertical elements here Something I'm not sure you can see, but I really like is that the grill is actually kind of slanted forward a little bit, which makes the car look like it's kind of coming for you. The grill actually sits a little bit lower than it used to, and that kind of gives the car a slightly more sporty stance. Overall, I really like it, but this car is something like 20 centimeters longer than a 1 Series, so there's literally more to see at the side of the car. And this one has really caught my eye because it's in a really striking color. It's called Renata Blau. What's it called? Blue. What? Borussia Turkish Blue. Because it's called Borussia Turkish Blue. Let's take a closer look. I'm keeping all that in, by the way. Okay, I saw you looking at the wheels. These are 19 inches and they are the biggest that you can get for the 2 Series. Grand Coupe, and this car actually has something called the M Technology Pack. So if you have a look through these spokes at these brake calipers here, they're actually apparently from an M3 or M4. And for sure, all your friends can see that. Before we look at the rest of the car, let's talk about what's under the bonnet. It is a familiar two liter four cylinder turbo, 300 horsepower and 400 Newton meters of torque. That's gonna drive all four wheels through a seven speed twin clutch automatic. And I'm sure it gets this car from zero to 100 in less than five seconds. So plenty of reasons to smile, but this car is all about the profile and the side of the car compared to the one series. Well, compared to before, it is actually very different. So it's not like they've just stuck a new nose onto the previous two series Grand Coupe. The profile of the car is different and the stamping here is different as well. It's wider than before. And it's so wide, in fact, that they've managed to do away with those little extra flaps that you sometimes see on some cars that they need to cover up the wheels here. What else can I show you? Well, the trim over here, this is in high gloss shadow black. High shadow gloss black, one combination of those words. It's glossy, highly glossy, and it is black. And it kind of replaces a matte black kind of um, covering for the window surrounds. If you uh, look up close over here, I'm not sure if you can see it. They've kind of uh, carved or stamped the number two into here just so you remember what BMW you're driving. Overall though, I do like the look of this car. It does have a very nice stance. It does sit a little bit higher than before and that's because the wheels are slightly bigger than before. And something new is that you can have the roof in black. So that's very, very sporty. It kind of links the front glass with the rear glass. It creates this continuous surface here that really makes the car look extra sporty. Now, I'm sure you've noticed this little gurney flap at the back here. Who doesn't love a little bit of aerodynamic accoutrement on a car? And, you know, I think this is a very, very heavy facelift of the previous 2 Series Grand Coupe, but you wouldn't actually know it to look at it because it does look very, very different. Same idea here, it does look broader in the back, and that's emphasized by a number of things. So you've got these new taillights over here, which are actually very prominent. And you've got these rear kind of fake diffusers, I would say. They are very eye-catching and they, of course, exaggerate the sort of corners of the car. I do like the way they look, although I'm not sure they serve any aerodynamic function. Oh, yeah, tell you what, doesn't serve any aerodynamic function, this thing over here, but it looks good and that's good enough for me. So the controversial fools at BMW have given this car four tailpipes. Does it matter? Well, that used to be a thing for full M cars and not just 
and performance cars. So I can imagine some people up in arms because they have nothing better to do, but I'm expecting that having four tailpipes is gonna give you something nice to listen to. This surface here as well, well, I wanna talk about how they've sort of cleaned it up. It all starts with a badge that's actually bigger than before, and it works because these surfaces are a little bit more prominent than before as well. They've kind of broken it up into three kind of areas that are more or less the same size. So you've got this area over here, which is very similar to this section over here, and that's the same with this section over here. If you're wondering why the number plates are still here instead of lower down, as is the fashion with some cars, apparently there is a law here in Europe that the number plates have to be above a certain height. Okay, so you want this car because it's sexy, but let's find out if it's practical too. And it won't open for me, so it's also being stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you want this car because it's sexy, but let's find out if it's practical too. Look at that, look at how easily that opens up. So this is actually the same as before in terms of size, but that's no bad thing because you do get quite a lot of space back here, 430 litres, and it's quite deep. And you get 75 litres underneath. And let me show you something nifty. So <laughs> let's see if uh, I can make this work and not look like a fool, but you can just fold it. <laughs> Pull it and leave it in the garage and there you have full access to what is actually quite a large boot and if you actually do need more space than that well let me just do this in the reverse now so that's push fold clap your hands in triumph and if you need more space you can actually drop the front seat so the rear seats that is and then you've got lots of space for say long items like a bicycle or what have you. Apparently the BMW people did try to put a bicycle in here and they were sure to tell me that they could do it. So let's take a look at the front of the car together guys but before we do that please consider subscribing. We are a new channel and we could really use your support. Okay jumping aboard now. This is all actually quite familiar to me because I've just driven the new One Series. But I hope you like what you see here. It's dominated by the BMW Curve Dash. Oh, I've woken it up now, but it is actually easier to use than some cars which have a big touchscreen but have it sort of flat because it's curved towards me. I can actually reach every corner of it. And oh, I just learned today that the proper way to use this is to put your fingers up here and then stab it with your fingers. <laughs> Live and learn. Okay. This interior is special for a couple of reasons. This coral red upholstery looks like leather, but it actually isn't. In fact, this car is nearly almost 100% leather free. You do get leather on the steering wheel. And uh, if that troubles your conscience, well, too bad. But it is a sporty steering wheel with the red band here indicating the 12 o'clock position. I really like these seats as well. They look like sort of full M car seats. And there's even this illuminated M over here and that will welcome you into the car before you even climb aboard. And that's a nice little touch, right? If you buy a car that's powerful and fun to drive, you want to look forward to climbing on board. So what do you see when you get on board? Well, it's actually been completely cleaned up. If you remember the previous uh, 2 Series Grand Coupe, there was a cowl for the digital instruments here. There was a touchscreen. Uh, there was actually a panel for your know, radio and climate controls, that sort of stuff. It's all gone and it's all gone to sleep. It's all been replaced by this cluster over here, which you might find familiar from the X1 or X2. So it's been simplified. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this because it used to be so much easier to do things. Let me see if I can just wake the car up again so I can show you what I mean. Like in the past, if you wanted to choose your favorite radio station, you just pushed a button. But now you would have to go to the radio app or if it's up here in the quick select menu where apparently your most used functions live, you could find a radio station there and then sort of press around and then go back to the home screen. So it involves a number of touches on a screen when one touch used to do. Something else I'm not so sure about is these aircon vans. They're actually very small. And remember, we all live in a tropical island and we like lots and lots of cool air. They are nifty to look at and this is how you control them. They've got a little rotary controller there so you can aim them where you want the cold air to hit your face. So let's see how they perform when this car gets into Singapore something I really do like is the small touches they've done to make this car feel a little bit special. Uh, check this out for example, these stitches are in BMW's M colors 
and they actually apply it by hand. There is a lady at the factory who diligently applies these before this surface is stretched over the dashboard. Now, how cool is that? It is cool, but not quite as cool as this. Uh, these are sort of 3D milled aluminium panels. And you can see that they are kind of backlit with LEDs. So they add a lot of cabin ambiance. These are of course the M colors, but they are interactive. So if I were to try and fool around with the temperature, yep, you can see it goes red, blue for cool. And let's just choose a different mode, something like expressive, which is one of the more kind of, there we go, colorful schemes for the car. There you go. So it's things like that that actually make this car look and feel a lot more contemporary. But what do you feel about the loss of buttons? Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will promise to answer. Oh, something literally quite cool, which I thought was a good idea, is that you do have a wireless charging pad over here. But I don't know if you notice, there is a slot over here for cooling. It pushes cool air out at your phone and you have these channels there to distribute that cool air so your phone doesn't overheat when you're charging on the move. Nice idea. Okay, now getting into this car is actually not that much of a pain. I do have to dip my head a little bit, but it's no big deal. And I am sitting behind myself right now. So just a reminder, I'm 1.75 meters tall. So not exactly tall, but not so short that I pick fights with people for no reason. And as you can see, I've got a decent amount of knee room over here. Uh, the seat cushions are actually quite supportive as well. So no complaints about that. Headroom wise, it does look a little bit tight. And so I would have to slump a little bit. And the other thing is that there's a little bit of tumble home. What I mean is that these windows kind of angle towards your head a little bit. So if you're claustrophobic, I wouldn't do a trip from Singapore to Kuala Lumpur in this, but for getting around town, it should be okay. It is basically the same as before. So if you thought that you could live with a 2 Series Grand Coupe before, you can certainly live with this car. Let me just check out the middle seat for a second here. And yeah, that's caused my head to collide with the headliner there. So I would say this car works better for four people than let's say five adults. We do have mandatory air vents and these are actual conventional classic air vents. So I like them better than the ones in front. Couple of USB charging ports so that you're set up for electricity, I guess. You don't have to bring a power bank with you. And let's see here, cup holders. So yeah, I would say that there's a reason this is called a Grand Coupe and not say a 2 Series sedan. It is called a coupe, but I think it is more practical than say a two-door coupe would be. You can certainly bring your friends along for the ride and have fun together. So I think we're gonna get the new two series Grand Coupe in Singapore early part of 2025. I expect there to be a 216 as well as this M235, which I really, really like. Well, that's because I'm a sucker for compact four-door cars with a lot of horsepower. And I know I joked about it being very close to the one series at the start, but if you think about this car, it's kind of a sister car to the one series. Well, I know which sister is sexier. Let me know what you think, guys. But for now, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. See you again.